Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can enter math equations into your Microsoft Access form fields just like you can in Excel. And today's video is going to be a developer level video. There's going to be a little bit of programming in it. Okay, so one thing that I do love about Excel is that you can type equations directly into cells. For example, let's say you're doing your daily bank account balance, right? All right, you type in whatever your daily balance is. Okay, today it's 1,200 or 12,000. Okay, fine. <laughs> I'll, t I'll take that. <laughs> All right, and then you got like four or five pending items, but now some of my bank accounts do show you the pending total, right? Other ones don't. Like that's one of my pet peeves with Amazon. I've got an Amazon credit card. They don't total up the pending transactions, which drive me nuts. So then you got to either open up your calculator or you got to, you know, figure it out in your head. But I just want to be able to do this. I want to say, okay, I got, I got a $12 charge coming out. So minus 12, a $22 charge, a $35 charge, and then maybe a $15 payment. So I'll type in something like that right into the pending field. Press enter and Excel does the work for you. Okay. Can't do that in access. All right, if you've got a numeric field, like let's say family size, it's a number, okay? And we're, same thing with currency values, doesn't matter. All right, if I come over here to family size, if I type in two plus two, you get an error message. Okay, not valid for this field. You gotta type in an actual number. So I wanna be able to set a field up where I can just come in here and type in minus five, minus six, or plus six, whatever, right? Plus 69, plus four, plus one, enter, and it calculates that for me, okay? Unfortunately, there's no built-in way to do that in Access, but we can do it with a little bit of programming. And I say little bit because this is a fast tip, so it's not going to be too much programming. If it was a lot of programming, I'd make a developer lesson out of it. But let me show you how to do it. Now, this is one of those things that's not terribly hard to do if you have the background and the knowledge for it. Okay, so in order to do this, yeah, it's not a lot of code. It's only maybe five, ten lines of code but you gotta know a lot of the stuff building up to it. So, first of all, if you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this video, it's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. Then you're gonna have to know how some basic events work. There's an after update event, go watch this video. This is free, by the way, these are all free videos. They're on my website and my YouTube channel. I'll put links down below you can click on. After update fires when you change a value. Okay, so go watch that one. Go watch this video on the on current event. This one runs when you move from record to record. And optionally, here are some other ones for you. You should know what null means and how to use the is null function. We're going to do a little basic error handling with an on error resume next. So go watch this. We'll use an if then clause optionally. You can or you can't. You can get away without this one. But if you want to learn about if then statements, go watch this one. And finally, go watch my string functions video. We're going to use the left, right, and length string functions in this video. Okay, here we go. Okay, now for you more advanced programmers, I tried playing around with doing this with just one field, with both the before update events for the family size field and the form error event, and neither one of those will work properly. I can't get them to work. If you can, if you can do this without creating a second field, I want to know about it, so let me know. But my solution is to add a second unbound field. We're going to call it family size text. The problem is, is that if it's a numeric field, it's bound to a number field in the table or a currency field. When I say number, I also mean currency. If it's bound to that type of field in the table, you have to enter a numeric value. You can't get away with putting in the pluses and minuses or parentheses. So we're going to have to use a text field to do our data entry, which will also be what we'll see on the screen, but we'll still save the data in that numeric field. We'll just hide it, okay? All right, so the first thing is to add a text field for this, family size. All right, I'll call it family size text. So I'll just copy and paste this, copy, paste. And we're gonna put you up here and delete that label. And I'm gonna shrink this guy down like that. This'll be the hidden one, and this'll be the text value, okay? We're going to rename this guy. We're going to call this family size text. And we're going to get rid of the control source. Okay, it can't be bound to anything in the table. All right, that's the number value. And we're going to hide this one eventually. So right now, let's do white text with a red background. 
Okay. And there we go. Now, this guy is what we're going to do the data entry into, but we also need to see what the value is in there. All right, so to do that, we're going to use the after update and the on current event. So when this thing is updated, well, this guy should never actually really be updated. So really, on current should work. But I'm going to put it in there anyways, just in case you decide you want to make this visible later on. So go to events, go to after update, dot, dot, dot. Okay. Now we're going to make our own subroutine because we're going to be calling it from two locations. It's going to be called update family size text. We're going to update the text field. Where is that going to go? Right up top here. Private sub update family size text. And all that is going to do is it's going to say family size text equals whatever's in family size. That's it. All right, now we can't just call it from the after update. We also have to call it from the forms on current event. So right here, form on current. And we're going to copy and paste that. Okay, so if we update family size, it'll update the text field. And as we move from record to record, it'll also update that text field. So save it. Let's close it and come back in. And you can see right there, as I move from record to record, it's updating, see? Okay, and if you change this, it will also update. Okay, but I'm not too worried about that because we're going to hide this eventually. But again, I'm leaving it in there in case you decide you want to leave it visible. And while I'm also in here, I'm going to update the tab order. Okay, so you go tab here, tab to there. All right, save it, close it. Okay, now we have to go the opposite direction. The user is going to actually be typing the value into here. So when they do, I need to evaluate what they type in and save that value over here. How do we do that? Well, there's something called the eval function. Let's see how that works. We're going to go into this guy's after update event as well. So this happens when they use after the user updates this guy. Okay. We're going to say family size equals eval family size text. Okay. The eval function basically takes a string value and evaluates it mathematically and converts that over to a number value. Okay, so save it. And let's take a look at what we get. All right, I'm going to come over here and I'll type in 2 plus 2 and hit tab. Boom, there's my 4. See that? Pretty cool. Minus 8, minus 8, minus 5. Boom, negative 21. Beautiful. Okay. Um, you can also put in things like parentheses 4 plus 5, close parentheses times 9. As long as it's a valid math equation, boom, Access will evaluate it for you. Okay. Now, when that happens, we don't want to actually see that there. We want this to update itself. So after that runs, we're then going to also say family size text equals family size. Evaluate it and then set me to the math, uh, the, the calculated version as well. So if I come in here and I say plus two plus two, boom, they both change to four. Because remember, this will be hidden, right? Minus eight, minus five, minus one, boom, negative 14. All right. Okay, next up we have to handle null values because if you come in here and delete this and then press tab, eh, we get an invalid use of null. All right, let's end that. So what we can do is, there's a couple things we could do. First, we could check for the null value. Right? We can come in here and say if is null family family size text, then family size equals zero, else do that, and if. Okay, that's one way we could handle it. And that will work for the null values. So if I come in here and put down a three, and then I come back in here and delete it, I get my zero. Okay, and that's fine. But now we also have something where, what if they type in something that's not valid at all? Like they type in poop, okay? Right, can't find the name poop you entered. It's trying to evaluate that. It's trying to find a field name or something, but it has no idea what poop is. So we need a general, more um, robust way of checking for any time they enter something that Access can't evaluate. So for that, we'll use one of my favorite one of my favorite things, but one of my least favorite things, which is on error resume next. You have to be very careful using this. Don't use it, you know, in every situation. But in this situation, it's going to work just fine. 
we can actually get rid of the if then statement like this. All right, I'm just clicking on there and hitting Control Y. Control Y, which by the way, Mike Wolf, yeah, Control Y to cut <laughs> the line. <laughs> I've been doing that for years. Um, all right, so now what we're going to say is right here on error, resume next. Okay, what that says is if you encounter an error, just ignore it and move on to the next line. So it's going to set family size to zero. Okay. And then it's going to try to evaluate family size text. If it's successful, family size will get a new value. If not, it's going to ignore it and continue on to the next line, in which case family size is zero. Okay. So now if I come out here and I type in something like five plus five, I get my 10. If I type in eight, I get my eight. If I type in um, uh, poop, I get a zero. If I type in a null, I get a zero. Okay, see how that works? So that's, again, you got to be careful with this. And I talk about this a lot more in my uh, error handling debugging video. But if you got a big long list of commands here and you throw an on error resume next up top, it, and, and it could, you know, any one of those lines could be causing an error and you don't know about it. When you're developing your database, sometimes you want to know what that error is so you can handle it or fix it. Um, don't just, you know, this, the, I use this very sparingly for very small bits of code. And if, the, if there was a lot more stuff after this, I would turn error handling off after it with an on error go to zero. That puts error handling back on the way, it, or back off the way it was initially. But here it's a tiny subroutine, so that right there is all we need. One more thing I thought about when I was running through this before is that if you get people that are used to Excel, and that's part of the reason why we're doing this. I, I use this a lot when I do my, my daily, like check my balances and stuff, or weekly I check all my credit card balances. You know, like I said, some websites do and some don't give you that pending total. I just want to type in, you know, nine plus eight plus, I don't want to have to do, do math in my head, especially because I do that first thing in the morning before my coffee has kicked in. But what I was trying to say is, um, if you've got people that are used to Excel, they might be used to starting off with an equal sign. All right, equals five plus nine plus six, zero. Why is that? Well, because access is handling that as an equality. It's trying to say, is this equal to, and it's returning a Boolean value, which in this case is always gonna return a false. So what we need to do if they start with an equal sign here is just chop it off. And to do that, we'll look at the left one character and say, if that's an equal sign, remove it. Okay, a little bit more complicated line of code, but we'll come right here and we'll say if left family size text comma one equals an equal sign. Okay, careful there, see that? Then family size text equals, we want the right n minus one characters, right? All, we want the whole rest of the string from the right side. So it's gonna be the right of family size text comma the length of family size text minus one. All right, so if it's 10 characters long, we want nine, the right nine characters. Okay, save it, and this should do it. So if I come in here and I say five plus five, there's my 10. If I say plus nine plus nine, I get my 18. If I say equals seven plus seven, I still get my 14 because it chops that equal sign off for us. Pretty cool, right? And now all we have to do is hide this guy, but be careful because if you hide this, it's gonna also hide the attached label. So what I'm gonna do is chop this label off, Control X, cut, click on that guy and paste. I just reassign the label to the new field. And now this guy can maybe slide over here, open it up and let's go to format, visible, no. Yeah, I got a whole for a video on the visible thing if you wanna go watch it. I assume if you're watching this, you know how to use visible. Okay, and now that guy won't be seen. Save it, close it, open it up, and now the user is none the wiser. Boop, and there we go. If you like stuff like this and you learned something today and you're having fun learning with me, well, I got tons and tons of hours more of developer lessons on my website. Check them out. There's a link right there. I'll put a link down below. And, uh, you know, I cover stuff in the order that you need to learn it. Right? I do a little bit of this, then a little bit of that, then a little bit of this. And, you know, we have fun. But that, folks, is your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something. We'll see you next time.
If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to, I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.